team has studied two important civilizations, the great struggle between the patricians and plebeians during the time of the Roman Republic, and the other factors of hierarchy in Rome. The other is the complex caste system of India and the duties, or dharma, of each caste. In the Roman Republic, two of the major classes that faced off against each other were the patricians and the plebeians. The patricians were the wealthy upper class that in the early times had more civil rights than the plebeians, until the plebeians were voted later on. The ranks between Roman civilization and the early and late Republic were a mix of various things, ancestry, attainment of honors, citizenship, and the census ranks. The prize resource that justified a patrician was his birth. Tradition states that patricians were descendants of the original hundred senators during the times of Romulus. This limited the label of patricians to the sole relatives and the presumed descendants of the 100 senators. To further complicate the matter, patricians and plebeians could not legally get married according to the Table 11 of the 12 tables. Marriages should not take place between plebeians and patricians. One of the major influences that set apart patricians and plebeians was property and amount of money. Simply, patricians had more property than plebeians. With wealthier Romans lived in Dami, where poorer Romans lived in worn down, rusty apartments called insulae. The wealthiest Romans lived in villas, which usually had a large quantity of servants working. Patricians also had better, best political offices and could hire tutors. Hi, I'm here interviewing Dr. Frederick Johnson. And Dr. Frederick Johnson, where is it you work and what do you do? I'm a professor of sociology at Harvard. Can you tell me some examples of discrimination in the Roman social hierarchy? According to the 12 tables, the defender of a wealthy man must himself be rich. Also, if one has broken a bone of a free man with his hand or with a club, let him pay a penalty of 300 coins. If one has broken the bone of a slave, let the slave have 150 coins. In the late Republic, Rome's social hierarchy was divided among six classes, based on the census. The six classes were focused on the amount of property one owned. To be a part of the senatorial class, one needed to have land worth a million sesterces. Equitites needed 400,000 sesterces. Senators were usually nobles, whose ancestors had at least one consul. After the fall of the patricians and plebeians, due to the Lex Licinian Sextia, there was some limited mobility in the hierarchy. A wealthy plebeian could become part of the senatorial class if elected consul, and if he had enough property. However, voting was done on a class basis, given proper priority to the senatorial class, the no question class, and so on. The lowest class, the proletariat, who had no property, would not be able to vote if a majority was already reached. The each Roman class wore even differed. The basic tunic had no stripes at all. The equestrian tunic had one long skinny stripe on each side. And the senatorial tunic had one long thick stripe on each side. To recap, Higher-ranked Romans used birth from past ancestry to justify their positions. Senators and patricians experienced many benefits, such as political, and pow political power and wealth. The higher rank was kept restricted to patricians for a while. And the senatorial class, due to various requirements and payments, needed to be met. Where Rome had more physically based on power resources, India and its caste system based their prized resources on a more spiritual standard. India used a caste system to classify social rank and base it off the Rig Veda, a document based off tradition. It wasn't until later the laws of Manu in the 5th century described the various beliefs and duties of each caste. The caste system may have arose due to various reasons. Tradition holds that the great cosmic being Perusa was divided into the universe and individual body parts became caste. However, this is only a supernatural theory based off of divine beings. 
French scholar Nibi Dubai and Professor Guri, head of sociology at the University of Mumbai, propose the superiority of the Brahmin caste may have arose due to greed for control over the society. John Collinson, <laughs> Naysfield and Denzel Ebetson, an author, suggested that caste may have stemmed from the superiority of the occupations and not vice versa. Professor Hutton, who worked as a social anthropologist in the University of Cambridge, proposed that the indigenous people already had a working caste system which the Aryans sought to take control over and dominate. Whatever the causes of caste were, it was evident that each caste's position was treated differently. The Brahmins were educated, had high spiritual knowledge, and had revered texts backing their actions. They were the ones considered closest to moksha, the path that allows one to break off the cycle of reincarnation, otherwise called samsara. The Kshatriyas were the warrior and ruling caste. They had armies and soldiers. Kshatriyas were known for having a close association with the Brahmin caste. Vaishyas were the commoners who, had, who were significant in trade and commerce. They herded cows and sold goods. Finally, Shudras were the lowest caste, other than the untouchables, and were forced to serve other three castes. They usually accounted for the vocational jobs. Similar to Rome, caste is mainly inherited by birthright. Brahmins and their offspring obtain their tiles by birth. This secured each caste and prevents any movement to a higher social status. Brahmins also took a number of other measures to prevent any occurrence of mobility. They stated life skin and education to be a prized resource, while the lower classes were forced to do hard labor outdoors and didn't have time to study Sanskrit or with the sacred documents. Endogamous marriage were kept sacred and also prevented any mix between the caste. The second century law of Romanu defined the caste roles as well as the numerous distinctions within them. There were general rules that were present through all castes. Example, women should have simple names, no intermarriage, and students must beg for alms. However, some important distinctions were made. Different linguistic terms and words for, for greetings helped set apart speech between different castes. The caste also could be visually distinguished by the clothing they wore, much like the Roman tunics, and lengths of staffs they carried. I'm here with Professor Thomas Thomas. Professor Thomas Thomas, where do you work and what do you do? Well, I work at the University of Oxford, and I'm a professor of sociology. Can you tell me some s discriminations versus the sudras? Well, when talking about the god Indra in the Rig Veda, it states, the one who put in hiding the people of the lowly Thassa color, referring to the shudras. And in the laws of Manu, which were laws regarding the caste system, it says, the second part of a Brahmana's name shall be a word implying happiness, of a Kshatriya, a word implying protection, of a Vaishya, a term expressing prosperity, and of a Shudra, an expression indicating service. Higher castes tended to have less laborious jobs and had more political pa power. Abd Badawuni was an Indo-Persian translator and historian to the famous King Akbar. He was known for resenting the reforms of Akbar and wrote in one of his many works about the king's decision to have Brahmins, rather than Muslim judges, decide Hindu court cases. This is yet another example of how the higher rankers were able to command their own power. In another case in 1674, the Martha ruler Shivaji arranged for other Brahmins to perform his sacred thread ceremony and declare him a Kshatriya, demonstrating his authority over rival Martha nobility. Some Ursifers, such as the Rajputs, have legitimized their status by claiming to be Kshatriyas. Kshatriyas were supposed to deny themselves pleasures to be better soldiers. However, they spent relatively little time on the battlefield and had multiple wives and luxurious homes. Through the civilizations of ancient Rome and India were hundreds of years apart. The foundations of their social systems were similar. Both Rome and India's class structure were based off of heredity. For example, if their father was a plebeian, the son was also plebeian. If their father was a Brahmin, the son was a Brahmin. Mobility was either scarce or lacking in both systems, preventing 
Ascension to a higher social rank. The highest rankers use differences, resources to obtain positions and secure them by hereditary educational momentarily. Yeah, like